<laughs> Sometimes when you love someone, you put them on a pedestal. Yours is made of hair gel, weird hand tricks, all the salt encrusted letters you never read, and whatever other memories I had of you, but you were high. Flirting with the guys, shifting clouds to write love letters high. I joke, uh, I'm uncle. Uh, that doesn't exactly look like a celestial body. And you go, but the gel does make me shine though, right, baby? And we'd laugh into Saturday morning bowls of cereal because we were closest. When you were high, we were more than just family. There are days I think I'm invincible and find myself traffic running the way you taught me to chase pipe dreams, dodging exhaust, never getting too choked up. Breathe, baby girl. They'll want to see a girl like you cry. It's always flash these smiles that read easy money because you'd never read my letters. No no matter how high you were, my lungs couldn't summon smoke signals or burn anything hot enough to rise that high. It's hard to breathe or see straight or support families. All you could do was shine. And I learned a lot about stars that year. You shouldn't invest in something you know will fall and not always where you wanted to. See stars, all they know is burning. Bridges, gases, burning in the night don't smoke quite like you and smoke doesn't rise high like you and them stars, they don't shine like you but the sky doesn't want to be blamed for kidnapping. When you run away to a flat line in Jamaica, Queens, I always wonder if you know we live in the Bronx and that's like two seas away, that's two train lines away, two base lines away from high hope you got my letter Theo. I've been following my dreams like you said and they're all setting queens these nightmares they smell like hair gel I keep trying to reach for the stars in your eyes hold them pixie dust and fly but your smoke sets my lungs ablaze your baby Carol can't breathe every morning I wake up a mist, a mess of broken pinky promises, an envelope's mark returned to sender, and I just wish you remember you aren't a star but you're shooting veins. They die too, like dreams and people, and I can't keep lining my pockets with sharded glass looking for something that shines on Saturday mornings like you. The only man I've known to trade life lusts for lifelines and never stop running like your past is chasing you to reclaim the dark cold in your soul's worn clear through to the bottom. We all see through you. No more smoke and mirrors are just windows with an opinion, but you'd say breathe, baby girl. Did you know the inhalation phase of breathing is called inspiration, but you never taught me how to watch stars fall. But I pick people up from their lows. We were closest when you were high in the sky. Hope the highs worth all the low blows. Cause now all my memories of you are slam door and chip pine. And it's hard to breathe this litany of misdeeds. Or see straight through swelled eyelids. All I can do now is marvel at my fallen star. Let it burn slow like smoke signals. Acid promises and nasal passages or salt encrusted letters and open wounds because the inhalation phase of breathing is called inspiration, but your smoke can't uplift me. Thank you, thank you. Um, Um, my name is Ashley A.J. Johnson. It's very weird to be on this end of the assembly. Um, I actually graduated from Marymount in 2010. So for me, to, <laughs> for me to be on this end, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. I'm not going to lie. These lights are really bright. Um, <laughs> so um, I am a representative. I'm a youth mentor and a youth board member at Urban Word NYC. We are a non-for-profit organization that provides you, uh, that promotes youth literacy and provides free creative writing workshops, college writing workshops, SAT prep, to, um, all across the five boroughs. We have like a lot of Def Jam poets that come and uh, teach the workshops. It's a great organization. And um, I'm here today to kind of share my story and how far it's been. It's been a crazy two years for me, aside from the fact that I, I just graduated from Marymount and I went to college. Um, in the past two years, I started a small company and published a book. And that's like, whoa, that's a big deal. <laughs> Just a little bit. It's kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Um, uh, I think a big, my biggest issue my entire 
life, not my entire life, I'm only 19, I haven't lived that long, but <laughs> my entire academic career was, I did the extracurriculars, you know, I would watch my friends, and I was always blessed to have a really talented group of friends, and I say blessed in the most sarcastic way possible, because I was a friend with a friend that had, with friends that were athletes, and dancers, and singers, and artists, and then it was like, oh, but what do you do? And I was just like, what, right, I, what do I do? And um, <laughs> that's a, you know what, I'll just get back to you. Um, <laughs> in, <laughs> uh, I, in the past, I would say four years, maybe three years, going on four years, um, I started writing poetry. And I used to be a three season athlete. Only reason I started writing poetry was because I tore my ACL. So. It wasn't a smooth transition at all, and I tried to take the same confidence that I had on the court and on the field to poetry, but it didn't work because I had to speak in front of a lot of people, and the first time I cried, it was okay, because I'm not crying right now. Um, <laughs> mostly because I can't see. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, I was always, being defeated by my doubt. And my doubt was one competitor and one, one factor that I just really couldn't overcome. It wasn't like a test. You can't study to beat doubt. It's just there and it hangs over you. And in the past, over my first year at college, aside from getting adjusted to campus, I'm, I'm, I'm a current student at Drew University in New Jersey. I'm double majoring in uh, English and linguistics. And I decided, I was like, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something for myself and just not stop. Nothing's gonna stop me. So then I started writing my book. I started writing my book, I got my manuscript done. I was like, okay, I'm 19 years old, I don't have a degree, I don't have a lot of experience. Oh wait, who's gonna publish me? Huh, that's funny, no one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then I was like, you know what? I have the internet. I have a library card and I have a lovely school library. So I started looking out, looking all my options for self-publishing. And um, I self-published, I wanted to self-publish my book. I decided, I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. Right, it's done. And then, then I'm like, oh wait, but I need all these legal things that I can't necessarily figure out. Aha, Google again, Google for the win. <laughs> so I Google all my information, I did my research, I, and, and I set forth the plan, but then here, my, my little best friend in the back, Doubt, came to come and try to impede me in all of my success, and I was just like, oh, not this time, Doubt. <laughs> not this time, you are not going to win this battle. So, I, I, somehow I mustered the, the strength, I have, a lot of, I have a beautiful support system, my family, my friends, uh, I mustered the strength and the courage and just the organization to push myself in this process, establish the foundation for my book, which was the publishing company, and then I published my book, I set up, I had a book release party, I did everything myself, I booked it, I'm, I, see, me, I am my agent, my publisher, my, my, my PR, my, everything else that you're gonna, my agent, I book my own shows, don't tell anybody that because I have a different email, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I did it all myself and then once I did that, I was like, oh, this is great, this feels great. Oh, remember that friend Doubt? I don't have Doubt anymore, Pfft, what's Doubt? And I was like, I can do this for other young people and other artists and other friends that, that are impeded by some type of factor and s that they feel like they can't overcome. So I started Evolution NYC with the help of Urban Word and um, I managed to push through and, and now I'm, I'm helping a lot of my friends publish their first books. And it's kind of like a, a teaching process because I'm not gonna, I'm not going, it's not the same as a book deal where it's like, oh, you give me everything, I do it for you. It's a, I'm walking you through it, so now you don't need me anymore. You can do it yourself if you want to, but you should come back to me. So <laughs> um, I'm, before I finish, I'm going to share a poem from my book. <laughs> Product placement, right? Uh, um, this poem is called Humans Are Holy Too. Sorry. 
Birth is the last time you will be whole. We spend our lives learning to body. Before we can learn to body, we lose skin. Pain is the first thing we learn of body. We love to pieces. We love in pieces. You never love the whole of someone. We shed too much skin. There are pieces of me lost. I don't know where they are or whom they belong to, so I don't grow old. I grow young. I shed skin and start over defenseless. Every seven years, you claim your new body. I've been brand new three times this life. I told my skin it didn't belong to me. You love your skin, but it doesn't belong to me. You can't love the whole of someone while they're falling apart. You run under them, put palms to the sky, grab peace, and remember them how you want, how they once were. You'll spend a life learning what loss means, trying to find the pieces and their owners. Get a head start. Give some of yourself. Share peace with a stranger. Exist somewhere outside of yourself and break something while you're young.